musicians, their lives were far from easy, but they managed to create one of the greatest bands in history. International success came to them by chance, and in the end, they became an example of courage, resilience, and a strong desire to live. This is the story of Marie Fredrickson and the rock band. Marie Fredrickson was born in a small town in the province of Scania, Sweden, on May 30, 1958. She was born in the same year as Prince, Andrea Bocelli, Madonna, and Michael Jackson, which perhaps foreshadowed a great future success for her. Her parents, Charles and Jane Fredrickson, along with her siblings, Charles, Josh, Fredrickson, and Jane, worked hard on the family farm to make ends meet and support their children. Despite their parents' efforts, the family faced economic hardships, which forced them to sell the farm when Marie was only four years old. They moved to another town, where her father became a postman and her mother found work in a factory. Throughout her life, Marie had to face many challenges, and the first one came in 1965 when she was only seven years old. Her sister, Annalisa, tragically passed away in a car accident just days before her wedding. This event marked the first sad memory of Marie's life. Marie found solace in music, driven by her father. Alongside some schoolmates, she formed a group called Ordinato, where they mimed to famous songs by bands like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones using makeshift instruments. This pastime also helped her cope with the bullying she experienced from other students at her primary school. Her older siblings were also involved in singing, and they inspired her to exercise her voice and learn to play various instruments. They would buy records and listen to the most famous groups of the time, further fueling Marie's love for music. Her first owned single was one with the song Valerie by the Monkees. At the age of 17, Marie enrolled in the Esvalov Music School, where her immense talent, vocal abilities, and songwriting skills were evident from the beginning. Despite her young age, she astonishingly wrote a musical and managed to present it in different Swedish cities, receiving highly favorable reviews that predicted a brilliant future in music. This success also provided her with some economic independence, allowing her to move out from her parents' home while still very young. In 1978, at the age of 20, Marie, with her hair styled like her idol David Bowie, formed her first formal music group, Stroll, along with her boyfriend at the time, Stefan Talbrand. They tried to make a breakthrough in the music industry and approached various record labels, but without success. After their relationship ended, Marie continued with the band, adding new members. Although they managed to record a single in 1981. Shortly after, the band disbanded. Marie Fredrickson then joined forces with vocalist Martin Esteen Woods, and they formed a band called Mama's Band, combining the first letters of their own names for the group's name. They searched for friends to accompany them as musicians, and although they managed to record an album for CBS, the sales were practically non-existent, leading to the quick dissolution of the band. From this point on, and during the early years of the 1980s, Marie collaborated with different groups, primarily in the rock genre, touring throughout Sweden. In 1981, her alcoholic father, Charles, who had subjected his wife and children to much abuse, passed away from a heart attack. Despite his flaws, he had a deep love for music, played the violin, and had a great singing voice. He even rented a piano for his children to practice and nurtured Marie's passion for music, which would eventually make her a global music legend. In May 1984, Marie released her first solo song, followed by her debut album titled Hit Bint. The album received positive reviews, pushing Marie to work hard on her second solo album, which was released in early 1986. These works established Marie as a well-recognized and admired singer in Sweden at the time. Additionally, she enjoyed significant fame in Sweden, where musician and composer Per Jessel, 
who had already achieved great success with the band Jillian Tider and as a songwriter for other groups, became her representative. Marie had provided backing vocals for Purse Band, and they had collaborated on various occasions since their time with the band Stroll. Per recommended that Marie join him, and although she was uncertain about the collaboration, she accepted. In 1986, they recorded their first song together, titled Never Ending Love, which was included in their debut album as the band rock set, called Pearls of Passion. The album sold nearly 300,000 copies in Sweden but went largely unnoticed internationally due to a lack of promotion. They took the band's name from the 1975 song, Rock Set, by the English group Dr. Feelgood. Despite the initial success, Marie remained uncertain about Rock Set's future. In 1987, she released her third solo album, which reached the top of the Swedish charts and won the award for Best Swedish Album of the Year. Roxette achieved international success with their second album, Look Sharp, released on October 21, 1988. The album, a blend of pop and rock, climbed the Swedish charts and featured hit songs such as The Look, Dress for Success, Listen to Your Heart, and The News. Everything changed thanks to a fortunate coincidence involving an American student who was on an exchange program in Sweden. The young man, known as the Inks Man, heard The Look on Swedish radios and liked it so much that he bought the album and took it back to the US. He gave a copy of the album to Carve W Radio in Minneapolis, and they started playing The Look. The success was immediate, with the song being requested dozens of times a day. The buzz spread from one radio station to another, leading to Roxette's success in the US and eventually worldwide. The duo became aware of this story and met Dine Cushman, the person responsible, on several occasions. The single, The Look, was a massive hit in 1989, becoming Roxette's first number one in the US and the first song by a Scandinavian artist to achieve that position since the Norwegian band AHA. Transforming into one of the most successful songs of the 80s, thanks to the tremendous popularity it achieved in the US. The record label EMI proposed that they create a song to be part of the soundtrack for a soon-to-be-released film featuring the legendary actor Richard Gere and a relatively unknown actress named Julia Roberts in the female lead role. Composer Per Jessel told them they already had a great ballad ready. The song, originally a Christmas tune, had been written in 1987 with a piano and truly beautiful melodies, as well as a magnificent modulation that only Marie could handle. It was called I Must Have Been Love and had been commissioned by a German record label for their release in that market. However, the executives didn't like the song, and it never saw the light of day. The representatives from EMI loved the song, and when the film Pretty Woman was released in 1990, it became a global hit, not only due to the fantastic chemistry between the actors and the original storyline but also because the film's soundtrack became one of the most memorable in cinema history. An interesting detail about this ballad is that the sound engineer and producer Umberto Gatica, nephew of the singer Lucho Gatica and a multiple Grammy Award winner for his work, was in charge of the mixing and final version of the song. He traveled to Sweden to record a new introduction and add some vocals, and then completed the final mix in Los Angeles. Roxette was taking over the world, and their success seemed unstoppable. On March 28, 1991, they released their third album, titled Joyride, which also achieved great success. The title track reached the top of the charts in the US and about 20 other countries.
Over time, this album would sell more than 12 million copies, becoming one of the most iconic albums of the 90s and making it onto the list of the best-selling albums in history. The song, Joyride, was awarded the MTV Best Music Video of the Year, and other successful songs from this album included, Fading Like a Flower, Spending My Time, and Church of Your Heart. At this point, Roxette embarked on a successful tour in Latin America, enjoying their incredible fame. In just three years of international success, they had already sold 30 million records, reached the number one spot on the Billboard charts four times, and toured the world. From the beginning, there were strong rumors of a romance between the members of Roxette, but they always denied that there was anything more than a working relationship and friendship. In person words, I have always described our relationship as that of brother and sister. Since we met as teenagers, we have never had a romantic relationship, which I think is quite good for the work we do. In 1992, they released their fourth album, a live compilation of songs recorded during their first worldwide tour, which took them to four continents and included 107 concerts attended by 1.7 million people. In 1993, they released the song, Almost Unreal, which was featured on the soundtrack of the film, Super Mario Brothers. The film was a box office failure, but the song was well received and reached high positions on the UK charts. On April 29, 1993, Marie gave birth to her first daughter, whom they named Inez Josephine, after the singer's mother. The father of the child is the Swedish musician Michael Bolios, who is one year younger than Marie. She has stated that if it weren't for Michael, Roxette wouldn't have been able to continue for much longer. Roxette wouldn't have been able to continue for a long time as depression and other fame-related issues had led them into a downward spiral where alcohol abuse was too significant. Marie could only stabilize herself alongside Michael, even in 1993. Roxette continues to make history, recording a special MTV blog in Stockholm, becoming the first non-Anglo-Saxon band to record a feature for the prestigious network. Given the group's tremendous success, comparisons with ABBA, the most successful group in Swedish history, were inevitable. Although Roxette members claimed they weren't big ABBA fans, Marie Fredriksson did sing a couple of songs with Frida, one of ABBA's members. In 1994, their fifth album, Price Bone Bank, was released, where they drastically changed their style and leaned towards a rougher, more rock-oriented and psychedelic sound. The best received song from that work was Sleeping in Maker. At a brand level, Michael and Marie got married on May 21, 1994, in an intimate ceremony attended only by their closest family members. Per Jessel, Marie's musical partner, and his wife were not invited, which surprised and disappointed them. Both felt excluded and disappointed by that decision, as Mariah herself acknowledged in her autobiography. However, I didn't see it that way. My only concern was that I wanted the wedding to be private, that was the most important thing at that moment. In late 1994, they embarked on their second international tour, offering nearly 100 concerts in Europe, Asia, Oceania, Africa, and South America. They also visited China and became the second Western band to visit this legendary country, following Wham! A decade earlier. In 1996, the album, Baladas en Español, was released, featuring 12 of Roxette's most successful songs completely sung in Spanish. Marie received excellent reviews for her good pronunciation. The album quickly sold over a million copies and received platinum records in Spain, Argentina, and Chile, as well as gold records in several other countries. On November 26, 1996, the couple welcomed their second child, Michael Val Ozel. In 1998, Marie's mother, Ines, who had been suffering from Parkinson's since the age of 48, passed away, plunging the singer into a deep depression. 
In the early 2000s, Marie confided to her closest family members that she had started forgetting the lyrics to her songs. In 2002, the bad news began for Marie when she fainted at home and fractured her skull in the fall. After several medical examinations, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor and was informed that there were a few options, but her survival rate was only 25%, and she likely had about a year to live. Marie immediately underwent surgery to remove the tumor, followed by sessions of chemotherapy and radiation therapy. The aggressive medical treatments resulted in Marie losing vision in one eye, partial hearing loss, and limited mobility for an extended period of time. In 2003, King Carl Gustav of Sweden awarded Roxette the prize for the best musical band in Sweden since ABBA's worldwide success. Since receiving the diagnosis, Marie's husband returned and redirected his musical career to work almost exclusively with his wife, providing unconditional support. In 2004, as a form of therapy against cancer, Marie released the album, The Change, with her husband, which would be their only work as Volscios in English. Although in May 2005, Marie announced that she was cancer-free, the disease had not truly disappeared, and she had to continue her treatment. However, the strong doses of radiation damaged her brain to such an extent that she forgot how to speak, read, or walk, and she suffered from extremely intense pain. Despite the severe consequences of the illness, Marie fought until the end and never stopped working, releasing solo albums and collaborating with Roxette. In her final performances, she appeared seated and supported by an elegant cane, but she never lost her smile. Her last performance took place in Cape Town, South Africa, on February 8, 2016. In 2019, a few months before her death, the tireless Marie published her autobiography titled, Listen to My Heart, which is also available in Spanish, released by the publishing house Planeta. Marie Fredrickson passed away on December 9, 2019, at the age of 61. Per Jessel, her lifelong companion, upon learning of the death of his colleague and friend, wrote on his social media, Time passes so quickly. It wasn't long ago that we spent days and nights in my small apartment, sharing impossible dreams and the dreams we actually managed to share. I feel honored to have known your talent and generosity. All my love goes to you and your family. Things will never be the same again. I hope you enjoyed this video, please, share with friends and subscribe to our channel. See you in another video.